Hi guys, uh, this is Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. Uh, and in this short video we're going to be dealing with, uh, I suppose, another video in our series of videos dealing with group frequency distributions. And more importantly, what's known as the empirical rule. Um, now, just to, maybe just to, to quick overview, the empirical rule is a rule, uh, so the empirical rule is a rule that's associated with symmetric distributions. So the empirical, the empirical rule, um, it is a rule that's associated with symmetric, with symmetric distributions, symmetric distributions, uh, but more importantly, it's a rule that's associated with distributions that are that are normally distributed. Yes, yeah? so normally, normally distributed uh, distributions, normally distributed uh, distributions, and what the rule tells us is the rule tells us that within a certain number of standard deviations of the mean value, okay, if the distribution is normally distributed, okay, so if if the distribution if the distribution uh, is normally distributed, normally distributed, okay, distributed, okay, well then it tells us then it tells us that within a certain number of standard deviations of the mean, uh, what percentage of the curve uh, will be accounted for within that number of standard deviations. And more importantly, it tells us with respect to one, two, and three standard deviations. Okay? So if the distribution is normally distributed, then uh, the mean of the distribution, uh, let's say, uh, where we're going to deal with population, or we're going to deal with a sample here. Uh, well, typically we always have sample data, if that makes sense. Yeah? So we'll just look at the sample data uh, well then x bar x bar plus or minus a standard deviation so x x bar plus or minus a standard deviation we'd expect to observe approximately 68 percent of observations within one standard deviation and also that x bar plus or minus two standard deviations we'd expect to observe uh, 95 percent of observations and x bar plus or minus three standard deviations within three standard deviations of the mean value okay we'd expect to find uh, uh, observe 99 i think it's 99.7 percent so 99 point something percent of observations okay this video is going to try to figure out is what we're going to try to figure is is how the hell did we come up with these values? How did we how the hell did we come up with 68%, 95%, and 99.7% of observations would be expected to be within one standard deviation of the mean? So how did we find them? Well, the key thing here is this is is that if if the distribution is normally distributed, so if the distribution is normally distributed, okay. Well then, this is what we, this is what we'd expect. So let's assume. So let's assume. Okay, uh, we have we have a normally distributed distribution, a normally distributed 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 distribution. Okay, distribution. Okay, so let's just assume that. Okay, uh, with let's say with mean with mean equal to zero okay and standard deviation and standard deviation uh, let's say equal to one now don't forget it doesn't matter what our, once our distribution is normally distributed it's bell shaped okay, we can always transform okay we can always we can always transform transform to a distribution that has mean zero and standard deviation of one using the z transformation that gives us i suppose it's the mean of our distribution okay or for every x value in our distribution minus the mean of our distribution okay we're dealing with sample data here so minus the mean of our distribution uh, relative to the to the standard deviation we're more more i suppose we're more used to seeing this as z is equal to x minus mu all over sigma where we know the population and we know the we know we know the population mean and we know the population standard deviation and we transform to a to a z a z variable this z variable okay this this z variable the z variable okay has the characteristics okay has these particular characteristics here has a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one actually we call this the standard the standard the standard normal curve, okay? The standard normal curve is the distribution or is the curve associated with this particular Z variable. Okay, so the question now is this, is that let's say now we're given a normally distributed, uh, a normally distributed uh, distribution. I'm actually saying, let's assume that the distribution is standard normal, which we can get through our transformation, if that makes sense, okay? So let's assume that the distribution is uh, standard normal. Uh, what percentage of observations would we expect to be within one or two standard deviations of the mean, okay? So how the hell are we going to calculate that, okay? Well, let's just deal with the, let's just deal with the three cases, okay? So the three, the three cases that we have, okay? 
uh, are going to look something like this, okay? So we have a standard normal curve, okay? That's case one, okay? So we have a standard normal distribution. It's centered on zero. And what we're interested in is within one standard deviation of the mean, let's say down here, okay? Within one standard deviation of the mean, okay? Let's say it's here. So this is this is one standard deviation on either side, okay? So it's 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 one S on either side of the mean value, okay? Uh, what we'd expect to find is 68% of the observations. So really what I'm saying is that the area under the curve inside this particular area, yeah, okay, should be 68%, okay, should be 68%. And then within two standard deviations of the mean, I'll just draw this up here because we're going to have to do a bit of work on this, okay. Within two standard deviations of the mean, okay, once again, just assume a standard normal curve. Within two standard deviations of the mean, that's two sigma on either side, so from here, to here and here out, we actually have its two sigma or two s, two times the standard deviation, and two s. What we'd actually expect to find is we'd actually expect that there'd be 95% of the area in there. So we'd actually have 95% of the area under the curve. And then the final case that we have is that within three standard deviations, whoops, them curves are all meant to look the same. Okay, within three standard deviations, let's say from here out and from here out that from here out to here, that this is 3s and 3s out here, that what we'd actually expect to find is, we'd actually expect to find 99 point, I think it's 99.7, yeah, so we'd expect to find 99% of the observations, okay? So we are dealing with a standard normal curve, so we are dealing, we are dealing with a standard, a standard normal curve, normal curve, and don't forget,